All right, the, the, the bad news is I'm getting over a cold. The good news is if you close your eyes, the presentation will sound like it's being given by Johnny Cash. <laughs> 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 yeah, you think I'm kidding. Um, yeah, I, I, I walked the line. Uh, <laughs> all right. Um, I, I, I brought something I brought something you, may, you might be familiar with. Um, <laughs> It's, what, what is that? Big fat book. It's a big fat book, right? It weighs... It's an A&S publication. It's a, it is an A&S publication. This happens to be... Um, before, I get, before I get cooking here, uh, my name is Andrew Reinhardt. I'm the director of publications, and come December 1, that'll be my third year as the A&S director of publications. Yeah, wow, I, I did it! We made it! <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so, so my, my job is basically... Um, Wake up, computer. Um, God bless America. All right, sorry, excuse my English. Um, my, my job as director of publications is to figure out ways to take something like this, to keep making something like this, but then also to make it better if I can. Um, and so we've got something like this. It weighs about three pounds. It's, it's Gigundus. It's by George C. Miles um, on, on, the, on uh, Visigoths in Spain. It's 500 pages. Um, what this is, this is a, a tomb for data. I said it. It is a data tomb. It is, uh, it <laughs> yeah, you're like, what? <laughs> it's like everybody's going to start leaving and setting me on fire and stuff. But, but basically, this is a beginning. Um, I've always felt the publications, especially academic publications, are a good starting point. You think when you publish a book, that's it? Oh, thank God, I'm done with this book. No, no, you're not. This is the starting point for a discussion and for a dialogue. And for everybody who comes after maybe who comes after you, but that sounds bad, but everybody who comes after is gonna be adding to this data. They're gonna be using your data, using the information in the book to make something new. They're gonna write their own publications. They're either gonna, gonna scrap what you've done or add to the biography of whatever data is here in this book. Um, and uh, I wanted to show you a little bit about how we're kind of addressing this at the ANS with our publications plan. Um, I, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but uh, I, I have no PowerPoint. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at some stuff in real time um, as, as we go and, and see what's going on with how we're dealing with publications now. Um, let's, let's start with something, something fun, something easy. Um, if you happen to be a member of the ANS, and I hope all of you are, and if you're not, you should be, um, part of what you get is the ANS magazine. You not only get the ANS magazine, but you get the digital edition of the ANS magazine, which might be the best kept secret at the ANS. Um, I would encourage you to use you know, your membership to, to, to go online and take a look. This is a freebie link. You can, you can type it on your phone. You can type it in on your tablet, um, you know, on your computer, whatever. Uh, in this case, it's numismatics.org slash ANS magazine. And this happens to be slash winter 2017. And uh, I don't think you need the HTML5 at the end, but if you want to put it in, that's fine. Um, what this will do is this will bring up a, a scanned edition. And actually, this isn't a scanned edition. This is Born Digital magazine. We design digitally. We use Adobe Creative Suite 5 and Adobe Creative Suite 6 in design in order to put the magazine together every quarter. Um, and what happens is our designer then gives me the press-ready PDF, which I then... Um, deconstruct and recompile into a digital thing that looks like this. Um, and so, you know, we can go in. It's got page turning animation, which I think is silly. You can turn that off as a user preference, so it can just flip the pages and not look like it's, oh, it's a, yeah, we're beyond that in the 21st century, I should hope. But it's, there's something comfortable about turning a page. You know, one of the things, as much fun as I might make of a printed book, um, there's something great about having that, that illusion of the physicality of it, the kineticness of, of clicking and turning and flipping, uh, something very human uh, about about that. So yeah, you know, you've got something silly like that, but at the same time, we're starting to build in functionality to the printed word. Um, it's fine to read a magazine, get the content that you need and put it away. It's fine to reference this stuff in your own publications and then put it back on the shelf. Um, but we wanted to do, and one of the, one of the goals of, of, of A Day Like Today um, is we're talking about linked open data. We're talking about how different things communicate to other different things uh, within the numismatic universe. And with publications, this is really kind of the end goal of the data. I mean, we've been talking about data all day long. You know, oh, here's this cool data. Here's this database. Here's all this stuff that's going into the database, standardizing the data. Well, what do you do with it? What do you do with your data? You publish it, right? You want to put it out, uh, whether it's in print or, or in an online publication or whatever. And so by building in links, 
by making publications talk to publications, by making publications talk to data and the other way around, um, we're, 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 we're adding to this web of numismatic knowledge. You know, we're, we're, we're adding the synthetic text, you know, the, the stuff that we're writing about, we're, we're then linking to coins, we're linking to other uh, publications, we're linking to people, we're linking to places and all of this stuff. So um, let's, let's do an example here. How about theft by abstraction? Uh, this is an article by David Yoon from earlier this year. We flip right to, um, right to uh, that page in the magazine, you'll notice straight away that we've got a number of things that are linked on the screen. It's a little hard, you know, this, the screen's a little orange, um, but that's all right, we live in an orange society these days, hopefully that'll <laughs> change. Um, but uh, anyway, um, let's, let's take a look at some figures. So, for example, figure one is illuminated, I can click on that, and what that'll do is it'll bring up the image. Now this is really cool, it, uh, one of the frustrations about reading things online is the fact that you a lot of times have to jump back and forth between pages. Oh, figure one, that happens to be on three pages ahead, and I I've got to flip to that and I've got to flip back. And that's one of the drawbacks of using a book is if it's referencing a plate, you have to flip to the plate and then you got to flip back. And sometimes this is why God invented fingers, right? Because you got to stick your fingers in the book in order to flip back and forth between figures and citations and everything like that. So we're trying to make, we're trying to make this a little easier for folks. Um, and so the same thing is true of other kinds of coins. Um, and I'm talking really fast because I'm hungry, but, uh, <laughs> and you, you know how I love my food. Um, so anyway, uh, we also have linked notes. And one of the other things is, if you're reading a publication that has in notes, for example, it's all it's always about flipping back and forth, flipping back and forth. And we wanted to bring notes to the fore. I don't have to flip anymore. I just want to click on a button, read the information, dismiss it, and keep going without having to leave the page. Okay, fine. So the magazine allows you to do that. We're starting to roll this out for other publications as well. Um, and so we can flip. And oh, here's something. Oh, this is a picture of Bill Metcalf on the left. How about that? Um, but uh, on the upper right, you'll notice that there's, you know, there's, there's a coin or a medal here in this, in, this, uh, in this case. And whenever you see this little icon that I'm pointing to here, this is a link. And what this does is it makes the publication query the ANS's database. So if we have this specimen in the collection, you can click on that link. Let's find out. And here it is. Here's a gold medal for Hall, and you can read all about it. And then that unlocks your access to all kinds of data that is held in Mantis. This is super great because, especially if you're, if you're, um, let me backspace uh, here a little bit. See if that'll. Whoops, four four not found because I misspelled winter. If we go back to the beginning of the page, I should have just gone back to page one. And let's say we go to Elena Stoliaric's um, collections. You know, all of a sudden, here are all the collections. And if you want to see more information, you just click on the link. And, and in a second, um, it'll bring you, you know, in this case, to an Electrum third starter from Asia Minor, and you can read all about that as well. So again, you're getting instant access to data. We can't print this in the magazine. There's not enough room for it. But it's really important for us to read about it, and if you want to see more, you can always drill down through the digital edition of the magazine in order to get to where you want to be. Don't. Yeah, tell me later. <laughs> All right, well, that's for Peter. Um, so in any case, as, 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 you are, as you are going through and looking at this stuff, um, if there happen to be multiple images, um, they'll show up here, so you can actually just scroll through. Um, we can have these presented in large size on the screen. So even though a specimen might be an inch across, um, then uh, you know what you can get is a larger sized image so that you can actually see detail. And I try to link in high definition images. And these are all coming out of the things that Alan has photographed for. So they're really super good quality. And I'm not just saying that because he's in the room listening on the headphones. Um, so anyway, we've got that stuff going on too. So I just wanted to give you a brief tour of the magazine. It's here every quarter. It comes out. It takes me about two days to put together. Um, we release it on the same day that the print issues arrive um, at your homes. And, uh, and yeah, so it just gives you that value-added information and extra data that we can't put in the magazine because there's no room, but it lets you go farther with the information, which is something that I think people were trying to do in here, but we're finally able to deliver on that. So, so there's the magazine for you. Well, what else are we doing? When you yeah. click on a hyperlink, is yes. it taking you to a new, is it opening a new tab or is it? Yes. Okay. Yeah, what it, what it, what it does is, um, when I when I build that page, when I build that link, I can set the option to open in a new tab, so you don't lose your space when you're reading. Right. It just puts something over here yep. so that you can look at it. Yes. Um, are these linked in reverse? If I was looking at that uh, third electron statement that you, you pointed to, could yes. I find out that it was mentioned in a magazine? You can. These links are supposed to be bidirectional. Um, with uh, with the publications that we're doing, you know, like with AJN um, and with our monographs as well. When you have those links, um, 
and I'm going to talk about, actually, let me talk about that now. Um, here we go. Let's see. Um, we have something called the digital library that came out, um, I think, two years ago uh, to serve a couple of purposes. Um, one purpose was to rescue unpublished PhD and master's theses and dissertations from a, uh, a global, you know, colloquium of scholars. So, you know, you, you go through your PhD, you publish, you, you finish your PhD thesis, you survive your viva or your defense, and then all of a sudden, it goes on a shelf and nobody cares anymore. Well, we want to save those. We want to save those orphaned puppies, right? So we bring them in <laughs> and we say, okay, we've made this available. Saying if you're comfortable with this stuff being available, is open access, you know, Creative Commons uh, CC BY license, which means attribution. So I, we can host this stuff on behalf of international scholars. And if it never gets published formally, we still have a copy online that people can access. So that was one of the reasons we created the digital library. The other reason uh, we created the digital library is to host ebooks that have this kind of dynamic linking feature that you're asking about. Now, let me show you how to get there. And this is still a work in progress, as is everything in science. So uh, we can go to explore here on the home page. We can go down to digital library. And in a moment, here we are. All right, so we've got our theses and dissertations, and we've got ebooks. So if we click on ebooks, this will bring us in to ebooks that we have converted so far. Um, in order, this is a very long answer to a short question, um, but uh, I think it's worth the trip. Um, with, uh, with the digital library, basically, we got a grant two years in a row from the Mellon Foundation, um, the National Endowment of the Humanities Office of Digital Humanities in cooperation with the Mellon Foundation. Um, TEI stands for, uh, 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 God bless America, Text and Coding Initiative, sorry. Um, and uh, uh, XML is Extensible Markup Language. And what that means is it takes this book, which has been scanned as a PDF, for example, and it decomposes, I won't say decomposes, but <laughs> that gives you the wrong idea. But it deconstructs that PDF into its constituent parts. Images, footnotes, endnotes, captions, paragraphs, people, places, other related things, accession numbers and all of that, and everything gets a little tag around it, okay? So, you know, you might have something for Attica, and it's got a tag, and it's a place for Attica, and then it links to some place. And each of those is getting, a, each of the paragraphs, for example, gets its own little identifying number, so that when you are linking from the outside world to the publication, you have that, you have that link available to you, which basically says, I can link to this paragraph in this book, um, which will then allow you to, uh, you know, to have that link and that resource as a related publication to get you that synthetic text that you need for whatever it is that you're working on. So, does it, does it do OCR within the paragraph, or just do it, this it is format? this is beyond OCR. Uh, I'll show you what it looks like. Um, let's take a look. Uh, ha you know, like cooking shows where, where they're like, let's make this. Oh, I happen to have one in the oven right here. Um, so, so this is exactly what we're doing here. Um, let's, uh, let's say, oh, how about this? Coinage of Visigoths of Spain. I just happen to have a copy. Let's see what it looks like compared to the book. Um, come on now. All right, here we go. So with the TEI XML, um, it, it goes beyond the OCR um, in the fact that it, it's treating you know text elements as basically your bits and your bytes. Um, it's uh, it's got it, the the layout is native to your screen, so it'll do text wrapping and stuff like that. The paragraphs are delineated because of tags and the like. And then all of a sudden, right away, you see a number of things start to happen. First of all, you've got like this little fellow, which which I adore. Um, and so you, you've got things like this: monograms, makers marks, uh, counter marks, stamps, and things like that that are showing up, and they can be you know viewed as images. You've got notes, um, which if you if you click on, will bring up. Hey, Reinhardt, how about that? Um, <laughs> that one, wow. Um, so so you, you've got notes that'll pop up as you read, and then you can dismiss them as you go. You've got links. So for example, Spain. You know, who doesn't want to go to Spain? Um, kind of learning. Uh, anyway, so we're here in Spain, and we can bring up information about, uh, you know, from geonames.org, for example, or you can link to, you know, to other things, Google Earth and whatnot, um, as, as you go. Uh, in order to get those links, and that's all kind of baked in to to um, you know to the 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 data that we've got. So what does what does that actually look like? Um, you notice that we have a number of export features. We can export to TEI so that you can use this um, you know for for other things. Uh, RDF XML. So if you want to you know export this and then import it into your own websites or or, or use this to facilitate linking, you can. Uh, text encoding initiative. It's a uh, 
it's a it's a standard. Um, again, we're yeah, with with the humanities, especially with digital humanities. It's all about standards. It's about all about standardizing processes as well as vocabulary. And so, you know, we have a bunch of humanities nerds that get together on occasion, and they will have these big debates about nothing. Um, but it it actually is about something where 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 you know you can determine you know how to define a tag, how to define an element in, ma in a manuscript and, and everything. And, and uh, you know, after fisticuffs, you know, they finally say, okay, we win, you win, you win, and, 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 and there you go. So, so you have that going on. And it's basically a, uni a universal way of, of describing what's going on within the text. Um, you can tell you that a, a guy doing his PhD wants to select, copy, and paste it into a text file. Can you do that? Yes. Yeah, because all of this is op is available as open source, open access. Um, you can do whatever you want with this stuff. Um, and with the digital output, you could copy paste from this HTML page. You could copy paste from within an XML file, from a TEI file. You can export for, to a PDF if you want to build a PDF ebook out of this. That's fine. Same thing with EPUB. And this is one of the things that the Mellon Foundation wanted all of the recipients of this money to do is to be able to export to. A print-on-demand publication, for example. So, if you don't want to work with with electronics, you know, which which is the case for for a lot of folks. So a lot of folks, and I found this, you know, when I was at the American School of Classical Studies at Athens, and now that I was at, here at the ANS, people don't want to give up the printed copy because there's still a lot of benefits to working with printed books, and that's why we will continue to do printed books here. Um, but at the same time, they want an electronic component also for portability. You know, maybe they're traveling. They don't want to carry three pounds in their bag. You know, space is limited, but they want to have, have something on their tablet to read or to reference. Um, the fact that you can query on this stuff really fast and the fact that you can use this to do linking when you're working online is great. But sometimes you want that printed copy so you can export to EPUB or export to PDF and you can print from there if you want. Um, so we have that option available too. So the ebooks are searchable? Oh, yes. Yeah, you bet. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so we can search on the page right away, you know, so it's like, I don't know, Visigoth. What are the odds of finding Visigoth in a book about Visigoth? So we have 225, uh, yeah, uh, but, but you get the point, uh, is that you can search in here, you can search in the PDFs, you can search in the EPUBs, and if you happen to use Chrome on the, on the, on the right-hand side, you'll notice that you have all of the different instances highlighted on the right. Yes? Slightly esoteric question. <laughs> how do you, how do you, do you have any tools to build the index? Um, when, yeah, when we build the monographs, when we build the monographs, uh, and I, f I forget, I think it's, I forget the name of the software application that we use, but Andy Meadows identified it when he was here, and okay. I still use it uh -huh. as a starting point. Uh -huh. The AI is really kind of fuzzy and weird, and so, and so when, you, when I use that software to build an index, I send it to the author saying, Here, here's what the software did, and then you have to have some human intelligence put in there to say, well, this is ridiculous, or this is, this is correct. Um, if, if Google happens to have anything that's awesome, that will let me index fast, that makes sense. No, 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 I, really not. <laughs> I was working on my wife's book trying to like, extract terms, and it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's an amazingly complicated problem. Yeah. That yes. I'm surprised that there aren't more tools for it. Yeah, we use one that's okay. It saves us some time, but yeah, but it doesn't do the concept sometimes. Well, I mean, the, the, so the interesting. Part, I mean, basically, part of it is yeah. So I mean, there is. I mean, there are some. There's some word graphs in terms of concepts, but just doing the folding of, of like terms together is just an interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, 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 just, I just published a book, and uh -huh. they use software for the initial cut, but then you really have to have human intelligence to figure out what are the <laughs> top hundred things yes. in the book that would be there, in the There's no substitute to human intelligence. Yeah, professional how to for that. Yes. Yes. Uh, no, I, I, may the singularity never happen. Um, <laughs> all right, guys. <laughs> so. So uh, this is what the XML looks like under the hood. If you want to see under the hood, I, I'll spend exactly 30 seconds on this because I don't want anybody to pass out. Um, <laughs> but you can see what the tags look like, what the IDs look like. So example, for this, for this guy, Mateo E. Lopez, and I apologize for the spelling because I don't speak Spanish. Um, but we've got the person, the XML ID. It's linking to a VIAF record. A Vi VIAF is a person authority record online, which is universally recognized as standardizing spelling. You know, you can use this for orthography and stuff. But if if, if you are a person of note um, and you've done something of interest, you have a VIAF record somewhere that somebody's made for you, and it's got its own ID. And so the tags are happening behind the scene that will link to your VIAF record online. So if you see somebody's name highlighted, it will link to that record. And then not only when you 
when you, when you get there, this is really cool. It links back to the book. Okay, great. But it also links to other instances where this person appears. And so all of a sudden you've got this node which is pointing out in all these different directions. And so we can talk about neural networking next if you want. But uh, it does some really cool stuff. So anyway, this is what's going on with our digital library. Um, we've got about half the books online right now. We just finished getting the the converted TEI XML back from our vendor, um, which Ethan Gruber is now using uh, some automation and some bots that he's written to hand tag all of this stuff in a very smart way. Um, and so uh, we'll get those up by the end of the year per the terms of the grant. And, uh, and then hilarity ensues. No, you'll be able to, to actually use all of this stuff um, right away. You can start using this stuff now for linking your own work and for, for reading things digitally. Is this only public domain stuff? No. Uh, well, um, it, it's right now. Um, I think it's all it's all CC by stuff. We we initially we initially started um, with with just really rare out of print pre 1923 stuff um, that the ANS had published, and so we've been able to to then go all the way up to I think uh, Fisher Bosser's Athenian uh, Decadrams. Numismatic Notes and Monographs volume. So it goes up to about 2013, 2014, which is when I started. The goal is to, once we have sold enough to make the money back for the covering of, of direct and indirect costs of publication, because books are still expensive to make, um, once we've recovered that cost, you know, we've made the money back and we can then you know, I wouldn't want to say unleash, but, but that sounds really cool. We can unleash, <laughs> um, you know, the digital content or the content of that stuff electronically after one to three years post-print publication because we've made the money back by then. If we haven't made the money back in three years, we've either done something wrong or it's, it's a really niche market. Um, but still, we, we want to be able to share that data. And this is one of the things that, that the ANS is really good at is, is sharing our work. We play well with others. We share our data, we share the stuff in the publications, we make things available as open access. We're able to do that because we get subventions, we get grants and things like that, so that uh, you know, the cost is absorbed elsewhere, and it makes us be good international players um, you know, with the data that we have. And so, so yeah, we're, we're full on open access. Sometimes it takes a year for that to come out, maybe a few years for it to come out, but ultimately we want to have that data available because we are helping our colleagues and hopefully by helping our colleagues, our colleagues will also help us and that makes everybody, you know, winners when we're uh, working with this, with this type of stuff. Let me ask you, the, the magazine, <coughs> uh, how far back do you go with this full digital um, process? I started... I personally started building these digital editions, I think, after my first year here, so it only goes back about eight years. However, uh, we do have PDFs available of the issues, I think, that goes back to the start of the magazine in 2002. Oh. Yeah, and so they are, they are there. And Is the PDF version available or just the HTML? Um, I think for some PDFs available, I think for others, HTML. Um, the early ones are the HTML. Er yeah. And then yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I'm going there now to take a look. <laughs> if you go to publications, you go to the link for ANS Magazine. It brings you to the ANS Magazine home, um, where you will see legacy issues here, labeled as back issues. And then you can scroll back and then click on links in order to get to stuff. So I haven't tested this in a while, so it's a, kind of a grab bag as to what we're going to get. But here we are. We can download the issue, which happens to download all of spring 2013 as a PDF, so you can get that. Um, and then we have um, all this also this cut up into various PDFs uh, for individual articles and features, too. So if you don't want the whole magazine, I don't know why you wouldn't want the whole magazine, but if you don't want the whole magazine, you can get it article by article. Um, and, and you've got that going on. Um, some of the other things, speaking of open access publications, is uh, you know a lot of things as, as they you know grow older, um, we uh, you know we, we find these available online. We wanted to take control of that, um, and uh, one of the first things that we did when I first started here at the ANS is is partner up with a place called Hathi Trust, uh, H A T H I Trust dot org. Um, and they specialize in open access publications for various Creative Commons licenses. And so for a lot of our older material, we've made this available as, as CC0, that is to say public domain. We want to share all of this data. We're trying to be as promiscuous with our data as possible because we want it to cross-pollinate with everything, you know. So, for example, I can go in 
to the uh, 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 ANS store, I can click on something like American Journal of Numismatics, and, oh, I don't know, let's do AJN 19 from 2007. Now, we can buy a hardcover copy for 60 bucks if you want this for your personal collection, for your library, to have this printed artifact. For me as an archaeologist, and you know, to speak to, to, to what David was saying earlier, I have a classical education myself. I, I dug in Greece and dug in Italy and, and studied Greek pottery before I got to the digital side of things. So to me, a book is an artifact. A book is also an ar archaeological site, but we can talk about that later if you want. Um, it is, and I can explain it. Um, but anyway, if you want that artifact, you can have it. You can pay money. You can get it. But you want the content. You know, the content is really the cool thing. And so, okay, what do I? How do I do that? I click on the link. To the Hottie Trust, and this brings me to the record for AJN 19 on the Hottie Trust, and I can download that as a PDF, as an ebook, as uh, you know, as an EPUB. I can print it. I can do the whole thing. I can select pages. I can print one page. I can print an article. It doesn't matter. And so all of this stuff is available online for free for you to use. Um, and it's just a matter of knowing how to look, which is why I'm talking to you and being recorded right there. Um, so in any case, that's what's going on with Hottie Trust. It has back issues of the AJN. It's got a lot of our old monographs. Uh, annual reports, things like that. It's all there, so so you can get to it. Um, so anyway, that's what's going on with that particular thing. And uh, I think the last thing I wanted to talk about um, is another way of thinking about publication. Um, and actually, before we get too far, uh, with those ebooks that we've done, uh, we recently signed an agreement with Crossref. Uh, Crossref uh, is a clearinghouse and a signer of what is known as a digital object identifier, or DOI. Um, and that's a unique number assigned to a digital thing that lives online. And so for all of these ebooks and e-publications that we have, we want to make sure that people can discover these and as they move around, because the internet changes all the time, we want to be able to follow that as things move. Um, and so each monograph, each article, um, each journal, for example, will have a DOI assigned to it, which will publish and then you can find it in that way. And you'll notice a lot of citations if you're reading modern scholarship will reference digital material and include a DOI in the citations. So that's, that's what, you, what you use in order to find your way back to the original digital source. <coughs> Here goes the Johnny Cash voice. Um, is, 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 that, is that, I mean, if the original, sor if the original source of it, is it archived somewhere as the official or? Is it the document we, itself, what is that referred to? We have a, uh, the ANAS will maintain a version of record. Mm -hmm. um, and right now, I think that for, for everything we do, the version of record is still the print publication. It's what's been locked in, it's what's been published, because print is eternal and it's, it's, it's a permanent thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, but for, you know, for things that are, that, are, that are born digital, I don't know yet. We haven't had to cross that bridge. I don't think we've published anything that is first digital and second in print. I think that day is coming. Um, and then we'll need to have that, that discussion. Um, but, uh, but yeah, the version of record right now is still the printed volume, the first edition. Does the second edition have a different identifier? This, yes, because it's two different animals. Uh, second printing won't, but a second edition will because there's new content. So yeah, it's like giving a new ISBN to something. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, you keep those separate with a different DOI. We have a prefix for the ANS. So if you want to find everything that the ANS has ever published online, you use our prefix, which I forget what it is. <laughs> but, but you have that, that, that string of six numbers, 10 dot whatever it is, slash, and then the unique identifier for that thing. Um, um, one last thing before I get to this screen. Um, for, for because this is 2017 and, and because we are all digital natives now, even though we might not think of ourselves as such, we live in this blended human digital environment, therefore becoming post-human, right? <laughs> uh, it's true. This is part of my body. Um, so, so, you know, it's, it's important also as scholars to think about what can we do digitally that we can't do in print. If I print a book, what other supplemental material can I add to improve the value of that book, you know, uh, are there are there are there KML files from Google Earth that I can include? Are there data sets that I can put in with the book, saying here's the book about this data? Oh, and here's the data too, so that I can go through as a reviewer or as another scholar ten years from now, and I can look at your data and I can look at your stuff and say you're full of crap, or I can say no, you're right, and I have something else to add. So we're encouraging our authors to send in not only the printed material but also if there's digital supplements. You know, I don't care what it is, you know, 3D printing schematics, whatever. Send it in, and we'll take a look at it and see how we can publish that for you. And especially now that we have DOIs through Crossref, we can help publish this now. This is good. Um, so the last thing to show you before, before we all die of starvation, um, 
apologies, is uh, we recently published with uh, Google Arts and Culture, um, also known as uh, the Google Cultural Institute, to do online exhibits. And why do we do this? Um, this is another way of public outreach, and this is another way for us to publish our data. We think about publication, oh, it's a journal, it's a magazine, it's a book. No, that's just a little bit. Um, publication is also taking that data and making it available to the public in other kinds of ways. So what does that mean? Um, we're making digital exhibits now. We started off with Art of Devastation that Peter was talking to you about as our test bed project. Um, and we are going to be doing future exhibits every couple of months. You know, not the world can't all come to the ANS as much as we'd like them to, to see the exhibitions that we have put up out here. And uh, we certainly can't show all of the 600 plus thousand things we have online all at a given point in time. So it's really cool for us to be, to curate this material at the ANS and to bite-sized exhibits to, to show people Chinese coinage, Islamic coinage, counterfeit money, um, history of, of numismatics, and in this case, uh, arts and uh, uh, medals and, and uh, posters of the Great War. So if we go in um, to the Google Cultural Institute and we click on the link for the ANS, we can see our collections. It tells a little bit about the society. It shows exhibits that we can look at. It shows items that we can look at discreetly. It also shows how to get to us, you know, if you, if you want to contact the ANS, if you want to visit, that's all, that's all to the good. So let's take a quick look at, um, at some of these stories that we have. I'll just do one, and you can do the rest, because it's really fun. Um, so here we go, part one, Art of Devastation. Go away window. I don't want to look you up. All right, so here we are. So we first start with introductory content, um, and then we can actually dip in um, to the actual stuff. So here we are, we're getting started with this particular section on perceptions of the war, leaders and commanders. Um, we have, in this case, embedded video. I don't think I have this hooked up to audio right now, but uh, in a moment you'll see Peter talking about this exhibition and talking about AOD as a project is concerned. We also have medals with their, with their information associated with them. Um, if, if we want to see additional information, you know, as we go, you know, a lot of these medals have two sides. Um, and I'll get to one in a, in a moment. God bless it, I just dismissed it. Never mind, here we go. All right. This is me clicking. Um, okay, so if you want to take a look at it, um, you know, in, a, in an additional way, you know, first of all, you click on it, it gives you more information, details, plus it gives you the external link to the Mantis record or to the AOD record, um, you know, which gives you more data, more metadata about that particular metal, which is great. You get descriptive text, um, and you also get a chance to zoom in on the images as well, um, you know, so that you can get something that uh, can bring in to great detail. These are all high definition images, so you start with the thumbnail and you can drill in um, so that you can uh, you can actually scroll around and take a look. And because this is so HD and so large, you can start to identify other things that make this really interesting if you're if you're a professional, you know, with with medals or with coins or with posters or or, or what have you. Um, dismiss this. Okay. And so we can always, you know, go back um, and then continue the, the exhibition. But the goal is here is to produce, you know, 20 to 30 items that relate in some way, give you basic information if you need it, images that you can jump in on, and links to data so that you can find out more. And uh, we also have links to the exhibition catalog should you want to buy it at the low discounted price right now of $50. Um, but in any case, I wanted to show you this is another way of communicating ANS data um, to the public, you know, which is one of our biggest audiences, as well as to, to professional scholars and hobbyists and the like, um, who don't necessarily want to get the information out of books and magazines. So anyway, uh, there are lots of ways that we're doing digital publications, um, working on existing data that all date all the way back to Bass, and then also all the way back to the start of our publications program, which was gosh, 1861 or something? Yeah, it, it goes back a long way. So we've, we've rescued all of this stuff. This is a silo of data and it's still got a lot of value. And so it's a, how do we extract this value to a 21st century audience? And uh, we're doing it now. Thank you.